Good morning, Central Texas. This is Phyllis Jones, the host of Kiss Community Connections at My Kiss 1031. Good morning. And you know what? I am not liking the weather. Y'all know that, right? Because it's getting warm. Y'all know I hate heat. I love 40 degrees. I can live. My guests are looking at me like, she crazy. Um, too bad. I'm a Yankee, okay? I like 40 degree weather. I can breathe. It gets hot and I get frustrated and I just don't work well. Besides, my fact has been proven. You know, when we had those cold days, we had less crime. Get hot, people get crazy, and we have more crime. So, my 40 degrees works for crime. I'm, I'm just saying, and you get sick less if it's 40 degrees because it kills colds, germs, and all that. So, that's my plus for my 40 degree weather. And no, I'm not going back home or to Alaska. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, a cold dance, and right here, we're gonna have some cold weather. Yeah, you know, this morning, and most, you know. I have more fun if my shows are about kids. I really do because adults, you screwed up your life, so what the heck? Uh, but our kids, we need to pour into them as much as possible uh, so that they can grow up because, you know, we got to remember, we need to raise them right and grow them up right because they'll be voting on our lives tomorrow and we want them to make the right decision. So if we grow them right now, uh, they will. And, you know, a lot of people say the youth are our tomorrow. I disagree with that fact. They are today because they're living. Mm -hmm. The kids of tomorrow are not born yet, so our youth are our today. They are, and you know, so remember that when you talk about our kids. But we need to pour into them. We need more activities for them. And also we need to highlight our kids when they do something good. You know, we always highlight them when they do something bad. You know, we're gonna talk about them. Um, if you go to the detention center, the detention center is nice and modernized for them, you know, but we forget about the kids who do good because we just go, oh yeah, she'll do good. Well, no, they need that pat on the back. They need, I see you, they need something. You gotta say something about them. Don't just say, um, I knew they were gonna do good. And you walk off, because guess what? They can turn out to be that other kid, because that other kid gets more attention. You know, they get all the attention, all the everything, because you're gonna focus on that. So let's remember when our kids do good, highlight them, you know, love them. Even when they look sleepy, like one of my guests. <laughs> <laughs> She said, she said she had to get up early in the morning uh, to come here from, they're not from Dallas. But um, again, good morning, everybody who's who's here. Good morning. The first group we're going to talk about is No More Violence. Um, last, no, last month, I talked to a lady named Trisha, and she was in Killeen when our chief um, became, I guess you want to call it the real chief because he had to go to training and all the other stuff. So when he got formally... Uh, sworn in, Trisha was in Colleen, and she talked to one of our city council people, Shirley Fleming, and I ended up talking to her, and she was talking about uh, no more violence. You know, right now, it's an important topic that we need to cover and keep on going. So, good morning, Trisha. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm good. Just blessed to be here. Hey, we, we're glad you're here. No more violence has been around how long? We've been in existence going on seven years this year, 2018. So what made you start No More Violence? Well, No More Violence started in memory. We had a student named Deontay Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, he was a young man, age of 12 years old, lived in DeSoto, Texas. Um, he was one of my students in children's ministry. Um, Deontay was a young, innocent young man that lived in an apartment complex. Um, unfortunately, you know, teen fighting is unfortunately still going on. Yeah. And we just can't really prevent that, but we're trying to, you know, start these children in the right direction mm -hmm. and make them think about their choices but with that because of the choices of some young guys that came into the apartment complex end up fighting and ran over dj oh and dj became brain dead um very graphic i'm not gonna go into details but right. dj ended up becoming brain dead because of the choices that some young people made and ran him over mm. um and because of that um dj was so dear to me as a student um mother and i wanted to start it bringing more awareness to the violence of our young people that are making these um, census choices. And right. so because of that, uh, the organization has grown. Um, and one of the things that we want to do was um, make sure that we focus on not only the youth, but the victims. Yes. Um, the victims are what they need to support the most. Mm -hmm. um, for the young people, we want to provide alternative programs for them so they can make the right choices in their lives. So we started that organization in memory of Deontay Johnson. And from that, um, the organization has grown, unfortunately, due to 
the high rate high rate of violence and more parents has losing their children we are at 23 victims families in normal violence since 2011 wow. that we serve in normal violence wow. you know the the I'm, I'm telling my age now when i grew up there was a fight on friday mm -hmm. but the fight on friday never happened because by the time Friday came, the principals knew, teachers all knew. So the fight never happened because they were outside waiting for you to fight. You know, they were outside yes, yes. waiting for you to fight. And so much they dissolved the whole idea of the fight. It never happened. But now kids have went from there to any day, every day, you know, and you have some lost parents. And I say they're lost because they'll say they didn't see it coming. Mm -hmm. And... I'll say, yes, you did see it coming. You just didn't know what you were looking at. Yeah. You know, um, because kids, when they begin to change, sometimes people will say, well, they're changing because of their age. They're changing because of the grades they're in, you know, because then if you go from middle school to high school, you know, kids assume they got to make this big, huge mental change mm -hmm. when they really don't. But they get this, I got to do this whole thing. And sometimes they go the wrong way. And also we have kids who are doing what they need to do yeah but their best friend is not so they go over there to try to bring them over mm -hmm. and it doesn't work yeah. and then they end up getting in trouble because they were just there but actually Ali, they were there trying to say listen come on back over here with me mm -hmm. you know just, just come on and so we need groups of no more violence to um bring our kids back straight so the young lady who i just forgot her name I'm, i told her i was gonna forget her name because she got a long name <laughs> <laughs> but okay say your name again antonicia antonicia Woo! okay <laughs> thank you like <laughs> so how long have you been with no more violence since 2012 and why did you come on board what made you come on board um at first, it started off, Miss Trisha was my neighbor, and mm -hmm. I was going over to, well, basically hang out with her, her daughters. Mm -hmm. And um, my mom, she would just let me go over there, and then I started going with her to different events and, you know, getting involved. And then when my mom started exploring what was going on, then she became into the uh, organization. And then we start, it went from there, and we started uh, going more places with her. How do you? 14. So I'm going to ask you this question because Trish can't answer the question and none of us in here can answer that question, mm -hmm. but you can. So wh how do you, why do you think the violence is progressing um, in your opinion? Because kids are, you know, kids are not being introverted about situations and they're, you know, not thinking about what, what this do, what are the consequences of what I'm about to do or, or who will be affected by this. So the group that needs to, I, I say some of this happened because somewhere there was a generation that dropped the ball. Mm -hmm. And when that generation dropped the ball, it allowed everything else to happen. So do you think, do you agree with that? Yes. Because I say my generation, we were the ones who walked out. We walked out. Uh, we couldn't wear the pants to school. So we walked out. I'm from Detroit. We walked out of school at everybody every girl in michigan at one o'clock on one day they walked out of school while the college kids were talking to our legislators mm -hmm. so so we wanted the right to wear pants to school sounds weird but we did so i was the group that in my age group we did sit-ins we did walkouts we did protests the generation after us rested on what we did mm -hmm. you see what i mean you know they they, they rolled on on our coattails of what we did so they didn't do it they didn't fight they just you know, took it as that we can chill now because we got over, we mm -hmm. got what we got. So they didn't fight. Mm -hmm. So after that, it just came on going. The generations did not fight anymore till we get where we are right now. So do you all listen to adults when we talk to you or do we need to be closer to y'all's age? No, I just listen. need to know. <laughs> I yeah, I listen because um, the stuff that y'all tell us, it could, you know, it could help. It, we're going to look back when we get older and be like oh yeah that's gonna that that really helps me in life so i i try to listen so right now let's say um the young lady who's who said i'm only here to take pictures i'm not gonna mention her name <laughs> let, let, let's say she was just you know kind of out there just you know just out there what would you say to her about no more violence um i would tell her that you like you should join it because the things that you're doing or you, the, the way you look at things, it could change that because that's what happened to me. Like I didn't 
like the stuff that's going on in No More Violence, I didn't really, you know, think about it or what it would be doing and stuff like that or how it would be helping other people and help other teens actually see the meaning of why I'm doing it. So I would actually tell her that she should do it because she'll have a different look on things and uh, mostly violence. And I think a lot of our kids don't do that second thought. You know what I mean? That second yeah. thought, they do that first thought and mm -hmm. they run with it, but they don't give their t selves time for that second thought that's going to mm -hmm. say, really, if you do this, this is where you're going to go. They take that first thought to hit their head mm -hmm. and go with it. Mm -hmm. So we need to learn. We, and I'm saying not you, but mm -hmm. we <laughs> need to, we need to figure out how to make sure you all know to take the second thought. Because mm -hmm. the first thought always gets you in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that no matter how old you are, when you get older, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and you know what? I'm not. I'm not picking on you. I'm talking to you because guess what? You're part. Of the the no more violence is focused on groups with your age. Yes, it, it's it's focused on kids. Uh, it takes adults to get it together, but it takes children to run it because we, not to say we don't understand what you're doing, we do understand what you're doing and we actually know why you're doing it, but we also know what it can end up being because we look at, you look at the now, we look at tomorrow. You know, <laughs> you, you look at, okay, well today, da, da, and we're looking at, yeah, but tomorrow, so we're there, we're here to say, think about tomorrow. You know, if you rob this lady today, tomorrow you're going to, you know, be in jail with some people that may like you in a different way. <laughs> and that's not where you want to be. Uh, so, like I said, we need to teach the second thought. Like, like you were saying, sometimes the first thought is right, but you still need to step back a little bit and, and rethink this issue. And you can rethink it just as quickly as you do the action. You can quickly say, well, no, I'm not going to do that. Or I'm not going to say that. Uh, so we're here to help you yes. do better. And that's our job. Because to me, if you're not working with children to make things better, you need to go away. We no longer need you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't need you. Because we're here to instill for you. Everything we went through, our job is to instill into you. You know, uh, we need to talk to men and women in prison. We need to talk to them. People say, why? Because uh, they can teach you how not to go. And also they can tell you the truth of what happens so that you can keep that in your head to know, don't want to go there and I don't want to go through that. And, I, you know, and, and you don't want to. So we, we need to talk to people who, like I said, been in jail. People say, don't talk to them. No, 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 no. Have that conversation because they can teach you a whole bunch. You know, they can open up your eyes to, to, a, to a life that you don't know and don't want to know. And they can also help you with that second thought. But Trish, you all are coming down to Colleen. Well, you're from Dallas, I'll say first. So you're coming to Colleen for an event. So what are you gonna, what we're gonna have? Yes, I'm, I'm, I tell you, I'm so excited. I'm just like a little baby, just can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> because the thing about it, fellas, I know what God is gonna do. Right. Um, our organization, we step out on faith in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Trusting God will open the doors for us and he do it every time. And so I know how the lives are gonna change because every time we do this convention every year, it changes lives. Mm -hmm. It impacts the community, it brings the community together and we bring more awareness to what's going on even in the world today. And so with the convention, um, we're traveling 50 states every mm -hmm. two years to a different city. And so we have done Paris, Texas for two years, and then we mm -hmm. did Dallas last year. And now mm -hmm. there was a need and ask for us to come to Colleen. Mm -hmm. But thank God, hey, I, I, I don't <laughs> mind coming to a new city. Right. And I can say that Colleen has opened the No More Violence with open arms mm -hmm. um, from every person from the city that has said, okay, we're here to support you, we're here right. to help you. Thank God for that. And so we are excited to bring the No More Violence Youth Convention to Colleen, Texas, July the 20th and the 21st. And um, I can say that this organization is um, organized by sponsors and donors, and that's mm -hmm. how we are able to do what we do for the cause. Um, and the thing about this is that 
our organization for No More Violence, we're not affiliated with a church, but we are organized through um, No More Violence. It's one of our programs. Right. And what, we, what we're doing is we, we're providing a platform. And one thing that I do like about it, because I work with so many victims' families and I love them dearly. Mm-hmm. I'm behind the scenes where some people don't see where I'm in the homes with these families. Right. My heart goes out to every family that I work with these parents that are crying, suffering, and dealing with the pain of the loss of their children. Mm-hmm. And the thing about it is that every person grieves differently. Yes. And during that process, the normal violence provide a platform for these victims' families. In mm-hmm. doing that, what you will see and what, what a lot of the um, youth will see from the community, the residents that are come to this convention, they will see victims' families that has lost their children to violence that are our instructors. Right. Yeah. Um, the thing about it is that providing these opportunities for these families, they're able to heal through the process. And through the process, they're impacting the youth that's coming in the community. You're not just having a facilitator, an instructor. You're having a live mother mm-hmm. that has lost her child from suicide, from bullying, from gun, from gun violence, that are speaking to these young people, giving redirection and, and allow them to see this is not the lifestyle you want to live because right. this is what I'm going through. Yeah. Trust me, they will feel that pain and that mm-hmm. hurt when they leave out that classroom. And I see it and I feel it. And every time I just think about it, even though I'm just talking about it now, it, 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 I'm becoming emotional because I know what these families are going through. Right. And when they are impacted with these young people, this is what they will see. And so with this convention and how we have it structure is, we don't charge anyone to come to the convention because we don't want to allow someone not to come because there is a cost. Correct. And so with that, that's when we get the sponsors and the donors come in and support what we're trying to do to change lives in the community. And so that what, what we'll see last year, we had a good time because what we did, we partnered with the Mesquite Police Department mm-hmm. and we had a fun way of opening the convention with a basketball game. Okay. And so that was able to build bridges with law enforcement and the youth in the community to bring them together. Say, hey, you know, I work at a job every day just mm-hmm. like anyone else. I'm human, but I'm here to protect and serve. But when our youth connect with them, they say, hey, it's okay. You know, we can talk to a police officer. He's okay. They, they fun like us. So we had a fun game with them. And so what we're doing for the Killeen, and when I'm, I thank God for Killeen Police Department that's working with us already that has mm-hmm. an agreement with us that we're going to do a, a Killeen uh, basketball game they, they with the have, youth. They're going to have to pay people to be in this spot. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't see yeah. many of our so, uh, They got them. some. They got some. <laughs> some arms and some muscles and some ready to go. Some energy. <laughs> we are excited and we welcome them for that. So we're gonna start that out. We're still organizing, planning that location. So we'll get back with everybody on there. So we'll do that. And then we'll, the other thing we're gonna do Friday. Um, thank God for one of the host church in Colleen, mm-hmm. um, Simmonsville Missionary Baptist Church. Thank God for that pastor that has opened up his doors for us. Um, Pastor Tyler that's going to ho- help us host this convention and so um, on Friday July the 20th we will have a victim's balloon release okay. and doing that is because one we want to partner with anyone in the clean era that has a loss a child to violence that we can honor their lives mm-hmm. we want to make sure that these babies lives are not forgotten and doing that, we want to partner with even with the ones that we have coming from Dallas that has lost their children. That will be there in attendance that we want to honor their lives as well. So we will have the victims balloon release on uh, Friday at six o'clock at the church parking lot. And so that's open to the community. I, and <clears throat> oh, I belong to uh, I belong to a lot. But anyway, mm-hmm. I'm on the Bell County Child Welfare Board. Yes. Um, and. We do um, Child Abuse Awareness Day for us is April 6th is when we celebrate that. But we do a balloon release yes. for all of the foster kids and the other kids who have died through abuse. We release white balloons for them. So and that's so important. We too. will contact we Well, heck, I already know you are. So we'll be involved with you. Well, awesome. I, I know what you're talking because I worked for CPS yeah. for seven years. So yeah. that's very yeah. important so we, we, to we'll, honor we'll those link, babies. Yeah, yes, we'll link with you. Those families. Yeah. Um, and so what makes it all more important is that Saturday. Um, Saturday, we will have the Violence Awareness Workshop. Mm-hmm. And we um, right now, we have a pending location. We will get with everybody back with that on that. 
But what that violence awareness workshop is consists of many churches, many organizations, many colleges, many schools that want to partner with us because what we have, we have nine classes. We have a class for every age group, good, all the way from beginners ages, five years old. Mm -hmm. And those are the peacemakers. Yes. Because one thing we want to do is teach while they're young. Yes. Teach them while they're young on yes. how to deal with resolution conflict. Mm -hmm. Because if they don't know at that early age, this is what you see the results behind that. Yes. And so that mother, April Richardson, which is De Deontay Johnson, the one that I shared with her, lost mm -hmm. her son, her and I started the organization. She will be the one that's teaching that class um, on peacemakers. And then we have the suicide class. Um, yes. Young lady that um, started us with in 2011, she lost her son. He committed suicide at the age of 12. Unfortunately, um, you know, that's a, a life that we really want to make sure that we highlight mm -hmm. suicide prevention and uh, we thank God for Tracy that's coming on board and she's been with us ever since and she teaches the suicide prevention class. So wait, now I'm gonna ask you a yes. question. Mm -hmm. um, we have a other set of kids who commit suicide yes. as well. And it's our kids that are confused with their, their gender, I'm straight up. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're confused. Girls who think they are, boys who yes. think they are, and then they can't take the pressure from what kids give them, so they also commit suicide. It will be the LGBTQ. Mm -hmm. So when you when you have the workshop for suicide, is that going to be included? Yes. Okay. Because yes. our kids are suffering from that also. Yes. Uh, yes. And that age group will be ages six to seven. Okay. Six to seven, and um, we really want to highlight that uh, the choices and the mm -hmm. and make the parents aware of the signs, the yeah. warning signs. Yeah. Um, and even as a young person, understanding if they have a friend that even may have, um, you know, gave them a warning sign, mm -hmm. or um, they will understand that they can actually reach out to as well. And um, we also have um, a bullying class. Yeah. Uh, thank God for Kathy. She's uh, with Art Foundation in Belton. I'm, we're part of. We're, yes, we're part of, I'm also part of the roundtable. <laughs> so we do we do the child sex trafficking. Yeah, which I'm I do I'm gonna do a workshop on that pretty soon because child sex trafficking is growing because we're letting it grow. We're letting it grow, yes, and we're yes. letting it grow because we don't know what we looking at yes yes and she's um the bullying we will um have someone from the um church of um simmonsville that's i'm gonna get oh, she's supposed to be getting back with me on who's gonna be teaching it but we do have a bullying class for ages six mm -hmm. to seven um we also have the sex trafficking class that's kathy she yeah, has kathy come on board that. she's new yeah. to the convention and she will be teaching mm -hmm. that sex trafficking class um ages 12 and 13 and so we thank god she was just okay hey, whatever you need me to do yeah, i'm she, here she's good yeah. and so we excited about that um we also have the um, gun violence class mm -hmm. that mother and father teaches that class together they lost their son to gun violence however they have grandchildren that um comes with us kind of convention every year and there are ages of intonation there are ages of six and seven eight years old right so not only you see a family that lost their child to gun violence you are seeing the children the there family. at the convention and that's where we as a community want to come and embrace yeah. those children yeah. and that family let them know that they're not alone it's by themselves they have others in the community there to support them um we also have the gang prevention um, class that we added this year. We have a bunch and of them. Of course, OG, <laughs> and, and you'll be able yeah. to meet him. OG is a phenomenal, he's a wonderful young man, turned his life, total transformation, been in prison for over 12 years, and came in and just changed his whole life, wanted to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. He can tell you the ins and out what goes on in prison. And, and need real to know that. life stories yeah. is what our young people need to yes. hear. Yes. See, I can't yeah. tell it because I ain't been there, I ain't never done it, so That's I don't right. know. Yeah. But when you have someone that has done it, been mm -hmm. there, I can tell you, I guarantee you, when they walk out of that class, they won't be the same. They, they, they will not. They That's will true. not. They, they will have a different perspective of mm -hmm. what gang is really is. And as Tanisha talked about the after effects, then they will understand what happens when you make mm -hmm. those choices. Yeah. Everyone is affected by it because mm -hmm. somebody's going to end up getting killed behind yeah. it. And so I thank God that we got some powerful people, some live people that's coming in to teach these young people in an in a awesome way. And um, we also have the law enforcement class. Yeah. Um, this young man, he's teaching the teen class. And he's one of my church members and he works for Noble. Mm -hmm. Noble is National Black Officers Police Officers Association right. through Washington, D.C. Yeah. He's been with the organization for since about 
for the last since we started 2011. And um, the wonderful thing about it is that we're known to Washington, D.C. through the convention because that's the curriculum that he uses to teach the law enforcement on teaching young people how to comply with, with law enforcement. A lot of them don't know that. Right. They don't know. Yeah. And the scenarios that he gives is scenarios when you're with your friends out on the streets mm, or when you're yeah. in the public, how to react. That's what a lot of problems with kids get in trouble. They don't know how to react. That's true. And so um, we have That's that. True. And then again, we have the family domestic violence class for the women and the men. We have a class for them. So while their children are in class, we have adult classes for uh, family domestic violence class. Now, if the parents come, we are giving away free school supplies, free backpacks, and free school supplies to every youth that comes to the convention on that Friday. And, I mean, and, I'm sorry, on this Saturday. And, and my show will help with the backpacks. Thank you. So much, yeah. fellas. Thank my, you. My, my show. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm excited about it. Thank you so and, and much. And this young man who's going to speak next, he, he he don't know, but he will volunteer some backpacks. Too. Oh, thank you. Oh, awesome. <laughs> he don't know. Wait, he, wait hold, he, he didn't know. <laughs> he, he, doesn't, he didn't know until I said he it. He didn't know. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And um, give me this opportunity to share this with the community, Colleen. And, you know, Corpus Cove, I thank you so much. And I want to thank you for coming on. But also, uh, you'll be back. Yes. Because it's in June. And so I want you to come back closer to the date. Yes. So we'll have you can give in more June. information yes. uh -huh. updated. But right now, people can still be preparing. Yes. Because they know it's coming. Yes. So um, can I get my number out? Yes. Uh, I was going to say, yes. if anybody want to reach oh, you, how yes. will they? Yes. Um, we're um, social media. We have two Facebook pages, No More Violence Organization and No More Violence Youth Convention on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You can go to our website www.nmvyouthconvention.com and if you want to call me it's, my number is 972-805-7648 again 972-805-7648 and I'll be glad to talk to you anytime cool yes because me and her talked for the first time like two hours it was late <laughs> <laughs> not two hours <laughs> and yeah. then we talked I talked to OG who who uh, we're going to do a, a phone interview most okay. likely with him and, and so we can so he can up highlight what he's going to talk about because okay. he's going to talk about the uh, the real life of being in jail, yes. not the fake life, not yeah. the life you see on television or uh, as I call it, it's tell live vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. So I want to thank you for coming, thank and you. I want to thank, thank uh, Miss Lady, who's <laughs> sitting there like I'm going to sleep, <laughs> and Miss Photographer over there. She don't want she she doesn't want to be named, so she's nameless. So she's Miss Photographer over there. But I want to thank you all for coming thank on you so much. and I'm bringing uh, no more violence to our area. We need it. We need all the. In fact, all areas need it, but we need it. But um, I want to thank you for coming on, and we're gonna take a break and come right back.